way. Yeah, set mine up. Set mine up. What's going on here, guys? That's the off cut, isn't it? See why it doesn't work? That's better. G'day everybody and welcome back to the shed. We're back on the green ute and it has been a little bit of a while since I've had a chance to work on it and it's just all the other things in life. I've had jobs in the workshop I've had to attend to. The weather's sort of changed a bit with midwinter now so it's sort of got a bit cold and ordinary and we've just like I say had so many other things happening that we just haven't had a chance to look at it. But I've got another problem with this car and it sort of niggles me a little bit is I've traded for a lot of years under the name of Teal Custom Automobile, which is kind of cool, sporty, that sort of stuff, custom cars, the whole deal. And yet I've got a absolutely stock as a rock Commodore Ute. So I've been thinking about a few little custom touches we can do to it that will just make it a little bit unique. And the first one's the tailgate. Now, the good people at HSV put the number plate into the tailgate on this and the previous generation of ute and each evolution they got it a little bit nicer when they first did it it really looked pretty agricultural in my mind and sort of a why bother you should have just left it where holden did it but even when you look at these which was sort of the the second generation of commodore ute they built the number plate still just tucked underneath the tailgate there and it does look a bit sort of ordinary hsv made an insert that went into here. They cut a hole in here and they glued the insert into it. And with this generation, it was almost starting to look like something. But when the next incarnation of Holden Ute came out, sort of the last ones they built, HSV just smashed it right out of the ballpark. And today I want to actually modify this tailgate and make a similar thing to what they did on the, the VEVF models but put it on our VY ute. And so we'll call it our tribute to HSV because now Holden's gone, HSV's got to look for new markets and new fields. So we'll, we'll get it apart. Going to have to knock the Holden line off there. And I have taken the precaution of actually drawing a few measurements. So if I choose that I don't like what I've done, I want to go back to stock, I can put the line back on it roughly where it was. And I've got a measurement off there and I just poked a ruler up there and took a photo of it so it's roughly 62 millimetres from there up to that line and this one's about 12 millimetres above that line and I don't know whatever it was there so I've got a number plate there I've marked the centre of the tailgate side to side and we're just going to have to take the plate to it and have a little bit of a poke around and see what we got now if you are looking at your own project and thinking what can I do with a panel and it's always going to be one of those things Styling is a very personal sort of thing and what looks great for one person everyone else might look at and go, oh geez mate, don't know what you did that for, it looks pretty ordinary. I'm doing something that's been done before, I reckon it looks really good on the later model cars, I believe I can make it work on this car, so I'm not going out of the ballpark, but getting back to the, the modification on your own car, if it's a panel that's easily replaceable, um, go for it because what's the worst that can happen? If you find that you get halfway into it and the panel's all buckled up and it's beyond doing anything more with it, you can throw it away and grab another one. And at this point in time, I can buy a new genuine tailgate, I can buy an aftermarket tailgate. They'll fit in there and they'll fill the hole in. This one's not perfect. It's got a dent down here and I'm a bit embarrassed to say I actually put that one in it. Um, it's always worse when you do it to your own car, but you get that. It was carelessness that did it and um, no one else to blame but myself. I can try, plenty of other people I'd like to blame for it, but it really was me. So, getting back to our modification, I will get a result. This is not something I've done before. I've put a lot of thought into how I go about it. It might not do everything that I want it to do, but at the end of the day, we will get there because I know what I want, I know where I'm going, and worst case scenario, we'll cut the tailgate and weld a piece into it to do a few things. But I'll get started, we'll just get this badge off. So easiest way on any of these stuck on emblems is to just get your body filler knife and walk your way in underneath them. And look at the way it's designed, because you can break them in half, but if you're careful, it 
it's just a matter of sort of getting the double-sided tape to come up off the panel and um, the badge will come off. enough to put a little hole in there. I didn't know that was there. There's actually a little pin in the back of the badge to locate it on the tailgate. So there's no need to worry about measuring that one anyway. But with what I want to do, I'm going to put another line across the tailgate. So we've got this factory line here, and in my mind it's too high to do what I want to do. This one's below what I want to do. So I'm thinking we're going to wind up with a new line in here. And I'm thinking the HSV one flares out on the top quite a bit. We're not going to do it quite as pronounced as what they did on the VEVF. But I really like this line under here. And it's sort of almost like an inverted V that tucks into the panel. So I'm thinking what I want to do is on the bottom of the line, get this inverted V running into it and then get the top sort of flaring out to it. But the V can run all the way out to the tail light. But I want this top one to just sort of taper almost into flush on the top. So I've had time to think about it and we're going to have to make a little bit of unique tooling to make it work. And I'm hoping that most of it, we can just work the skin on the tailgate and get where we want. The lion will have to get moved a little bit. And if we look at the HSV example, they've actually made a little raised piece with a little perimeter that's pressed up to put the lion into. And they've got their own lovely little crash helmet and lion logo but we won't be using one of theirs because it's not a hsv vehicle we're just doing a tri tribute to them and um, hopefully maybe one day they'll look at a picture of it and go wow those guys nailed it or maybe they'll look at it and say oh that's horrible it is possible to get this goo off without killing the paint but I'm not worried about that because we're going to attack it with the angle grinder in a little while and chop a big hole in it. So the paint is the least of our worries. Got a bit of fine line tape, and this is what we use when we sort of do a color change or something like that, where we've got a, a line on a paint job, two-tone, whatever you want to do, and the paint doesn't bleed underneath it, and it's just called fine line tape. But I use it a lot for marking stuff out and where I've got to cut shapes and corners and things like this. This will bend and go around a corner. And uh, so it's good for this sort of work. We're going to do a mod and we want to have a look at how it's going to look. So with previous attempts where I've just held the plate up there to get a rough idea, I'm thinking I want a line across the tailgate about here. About that much gap, I'm thinking, but I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is just stick this end of it down, and pull it out. I'll stick the other end of it down and if we don't like it we can pull it out and change it so we're just below there so, we... so I've got my ballpark line that I've stuck in there now for the new feature point on the tailgate and I've got enough room to just sort of almost sit that in there so if I'm going to make a little raised up circle it might look better if I bring it down a little bit yet but we'll see how we go the other consideration is, is where the plate looks on the car, top to bottom at this stage. So if we set that in there, and we're going to have a pressing, that would come in under that line, it'll still look fine. And I want to do a little line like that across the bottom and make the recess off that. So I'm thinking I want enough metal in the recess that the plate will float in the middle of it. So I'm thinking the bottom line there, not be close to where we would want it. I'll just drop it down a little bit and see. So if we come down to about there. And out 
do we go on our low end now? Yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of a bulk in the, the top part of the line because where it's over the number plate area, I want it to sort of come out and have a little edge and then tuck in underneath it. And I don't mind the circle for the lion sitting on that. And that sort of almost works. We could live with that. And the plate would still sit in there. The station wagon tailgate's got a line in it and the number plate on it as well. And their line's roughly where the separation is on the tail light. So if we come down and try that, see what we've got. This is where the design aspect comes in. You've sort of got to play with it and trial things. See where they go. Now I'm thinking I'm going to wind up with this looking a bit stark and this looking a bit busy under the number plate if we bring our line in here. So, and then this is going to be all out in the middle of nowhere. HSV have sort of got theirs like that. We could revisit that. But no, I think for my money, I'm looking at somewhere around there. enough room to put that between two lines that's it lock it in so we'll try it at 100 millimeters off the bottom of that line and let's do the same on the other end and um, see how that looks yeah a little bit out of my comfort zone using metric measurements but I like to use the measurement the car was made in um, and Mine, most of the time, it actually works better if you're using their measurement, you're not fighting anything. So anyway, getting that line straight across the panel, roughly. Here we go, beautiful. So we got that. That's the centre of the gate. We'll call that the centre line there. Right. -o. That in there, roughly, 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 round about the middle. The little recess that HSV made is a recess and a recess. So it's got a little rectangular pressing that the plate sits into, and then there's a larger one. And the effect is just stunning. It re they really did a good job of it. And um, I'll take my hat off to the guys who actually designed it. And uh, maybe if they came and gave me a hand and I could put things on straight, that would work better. Um, so what we're gonna do is we've got to work on that. And we're gonna run this line through here. But looking at their pictures, I've never actually me measured a tailgate to find out, but I'm working on about 150 mil up here for the outside of it, and about 75 down here, and same on the other side. And we'll just get a bit of an idea on what it's going to look like. Yeah. HSV also put their little tail light extensions into the tailgate as well, but we can't do that, so we're not going to worry about that. And what have we got there? If we're going to come down there, probably about down here somewhere for the line. So if we work on there, and we've got 180 and 180 over there. Oh, that doesn't look right. 180, roughly, yep, okay. Now, 
factory shop radiuses. I've got a set of them, I'll show you what I've got. When we're gonna create something with a nice curved radius, it's always handy to use something. Tape's not that reliable because you might want to come back and duplicate it a day or two later and you've used up some of the tapes up there. So I've got some standard workshop radiuses and I'll just grab them to show you. Standard workshop radiuses for corners very handy for custom parts and they come in four convenient sizes and this is our small set of standard radiuses and once again they're nice equal increments down so if we want to do a little radius up in the corner up here we can select from this pile and we can experiment with our corner radiuses with these ones now HSV got a nice radius so I'm thinking something like this one here for a starting point so if we say that we want to be coming up at this point to there we might sit this fella in here and put the edge of him on that mark there and then we can just put a bit of a curve in the corner and see what we got spread the top a bit I think to where I originally thought because I'm only going off pictures and I was using a guesstimate but that doesn't look too bad there now so we might say we're going to go out about that far get rid of that and we'll put that measurement onto the other side which is look at that 180 so we've got Especially thing. In actual fact, we might go with the larger radius and see what that looks like. Okay. Yeah, I don't know which one I'm liking. Might be the wider radius, but I think we need to measure it up a bit more accurate than what I've got it. That's a little bit more. How are we going? But we're on the right track. This is what we're after. Once we get this finalised, and what we'll do is from here we can make a cardboard template and just sit it in there. We can get this line a lot straighter across here too. It's only just roughed out at this stage. And we'll make a cardboard template of half it. We've only got to turn it over and we'll get the identical shape on the other side. But I'm thinking there's really not much in it. A little bit more gentle radius looks pretty good. And naturally this is all going to disappear into the panel a bit. So I think it's all going to work. I've just made myself a cracker of a cardboard template. So both ends are exactly symmetrical. I wound up using my two litre paint tin for the radius because that looked the closest to what the HSV version was. And I've just drawn on here in biro. Oops, here we go. This whole panel here will get recessed into the tailgate. It'll be a flat panel inside the curve of the tailgate. And then within that, we're going to have a second recess, which will drop in another 10 millimetres or so. And I'm thinking, 
the depth that we go into the tailgate is probably going to be 40 to 50 millimetres, maybe a little bit more, but we'll sit it in there. We've got the latch arrangement inside here. There's the rods and things that go through, and that's the only thing that's going to be in the way. We've got to have enough depth that we can fit the licence plate lights up and above it to get some light on the licence plate. So we'll just play with that as we go. And I'm going to make the fold on the outside of the tailgate a little bit bigger than what this panel will be inside it, just so I don't wind up with a straight sort of pan poked into the tailgate and it just sort of looks like someone's cut it out and squeezed it in there, which is exactly what we're going to do. But also we want any water that falls on it and sits along this bottom edge here is going to drain rather than just sit there and cause rust issues for us in the future. Now this blue tape line is a little bit out of line because I just pulled it across the panel and it's run uphill a little bit, but I've measured 100 millimetres off this line down to here and the same on the other end and it's the same in the middle. But when you're dealing with panels with compound curves in them, it's often hard to pull a line across like that. So I will scribe a line in the paint, which we will work to, and I'll cut a piece of sheet metal on the guillotine that's straight all the way across and I can use that for my straight edge to rule to and make it work. We'll get this exactly where we want it on the tailgate, which like I say, it's very close now, but enough to get an accurate line around the edge of it. And I'll fold in at least six millimetres, maybe 10 millimetres around the edge. That way I can get my weld, when I weld the piece to the tailgate skin, around the corner rather than trying to weld the corner. And I've said before how much I don't like welding corners. And in a situation like this where we're dealing with a compound curve this way and welding a flat piece of metal the other way, we will wind up distorting this panel and that panel by welding the corner. If we weld around the corner, we've already stiffened this panel with the fold we've put in it. If we tack it in place with a new piece of metal attached to it, we've made it captive, it can't go anywhere. And then we're welding a piece of metal this wide and it's a good area to weld. And we've also got enough room that we can get in here and we can finish that weld. So we can grind it all the way around there if we're using the MIG. And I will use the MIG for this job um, just because it's so quick and easy. Uh, TIG welder would be better because you're going to have better control on your heat as you do it, but by no means necessary. Now, this panel that we make to go in here will have to be folded naturally, but we've only got these two radius corners. We'll wind up with a little radius in the top up here, and we will fold most of that as a pan. I'll split these corners and then fold it with a bit of an overhang there, and I want to do the same thing again. I will roll the corner up around there and we will have to just make a little piece to weld in the corners. Haven't thought too much about this piece in here. It could be a complete weld in again, but I'm hoping to get some of it pressed in. So I'll have a little play with that and we'll make some stamping dies that we can put in the press and jack a bit of pressure up on it. And we might be able to press enough in with that. Uh, 10 mil is going to start to be an ask but we could get a six mil um, thing in there, no worries at all by pressing it in. And to do that, you'd need probably around 30 ton, I would say, to get that to press into a panel like that. So yeah, so good stuff, it's all starting to happen. So we're pretty close to what they've got there. And we've got to watch our radius around here when we make it. So we'll fold that over and we'll probably get a T-dolly in from the inside and just work that edge to get a bit of a radius around there. So I'm thinking something on a um, five or a six mil radius on the T-dolly. We can't really do the, the tail light pieces into the tailgate easily for us. So we'll leave them there and we're going to wind up with this little bit of a plain area in here. But this line running across here will become a focal point and this will be the main focal point of the tailgate. And the beauty is the storm badge sitting over here actually does fill this panel in a bit and make it look nice. And looking at the HSV with an LSA badge on there, oh, that'd be nice in the future, wouldn't it? We could actually put the 6.2 in there and put the LSA. That'd be nice. Just let my wife hear all those stories. She doesn't know how much they cost. So what I'm going to do now is I want to get a good scribe line across the tailgate to get an accurate line because that's where we're going to build our new bead line across the tailgate. And so I've got a piece of metal here that's wide enough to go across. And over the years, I've spent most of my life working by myself. So you come up with these little solutions that you can do things one-handed. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'll take the tail lights out, get a bit more room so we're not going to scratch them up, and I'll clamp this on, on each side, make sure I've got my 100 millimetres from that line to this next new line, and then I can get a good scribe line across that. So that's our first step. I was just thinking back on all the videos we've done, and this will be the first one I think where we're actually bringing you a piece of custom metal shaping rather than just doing a repair or a rust repair or something like that, recreating something that was there. So this is kind of cool. It's Okay, I've got a hundred mil from the top of here and tucked nicely into the recess along there. So get the other end the same. And that's pretty much on the money there. So we get one in the middle and we're high in the middle and that comes down to the shape of the tailgate a bit. We want it to appear straight, it's going to have to parallel the line at the top. Okay. We are close. Well, it's pretty plain to see that if Roscoe P. Coltrane was here, he'd say, you've scuffed it. Good and proper. Okay. 319 that way. And 319 that way. I'd say that's nearly good enough. So, just put a bit of tape on there. We should also have a similarity from one side to the other. And yep, close enough. So that's our line around there. So we'll get a bit of fine line tape around the bottom. Now, I said before what I want to do is have this recess so it sort of tapers outwards a little bit. And originally I'd thrown the idea of 10 millimetres around and then I um, went back and revisited the idea and thought oh, it's going to be a bit severe and I went back to six but I've sort of settled with eight so anyway if we get a tape line around there we can cut it on this edge of the tape all the way around and get our line and then we'll make a little tool for folding the edge over and we can make that eight millimeters deep so that's easy peasy we could scribe around our pattern as well but um I think just run a bit of tape around it's going to be just as easy as anything. So that should be pretty close to what we're aiming for. Now 
Now this is where we're going to be bending it. And the difficulty we're going to have is most of this is going to be one side of where we're working on. Now, worst case scenario, we can get the skin off the tailgate and we can work it off the panel. But I'm going to try and do the bulk of it with it intact. And I'm really hoping we can get all of it with intact. But it's going to be a pretty big ask to get this curl either side in here and over there. We've got to do a lot of work. So we're going to put this line again in below this scribe. And I want a little ramp out above it and I sort of want a radius edge where it comes out and rolls, and then I want a sharp edge on the bottom of it. So we've got to create probably, I would say, 10 to 14 millimeters of extra steel in this area here. So the problems are going to be as we'll flatten this curve out here as we're trying to drag it in, or we're gonna tear it along this line. And either way, we'll just work with it. Now, because this centre section is going to sort of roll out radius and then step back in, I'm going to allow myself about 20 millimetres below the line, and that'll be a cut line there. I'll cut it up into the corner so we can allow it to move, and then if it wants to tear on the corner, it's a pretty easy repair from that. And then we'll make our pan that'll fit in behind it, and we'll be able to weld to the edge we create all the way around it. So, hopefully. And like I said before, I have not done this exact thing before ever. So that's a little bit of learn on the go as well. So we'll just check some of our lines. That's weird. They're really straight enough and we're not gonna get away with a no fill sort of job here. Like there's just no way this is gonna happen. So if we've got to put a little bit of filler in to correct a line on these edges and welds and things, it's no big deal. So if we come down, we'll put a line in here and then we can actually cut this piece out of the middle of it and we can start playing with it. So what we're doing here doesn't have to be super accurate, so. Or a long straight edge would be a great thing. We can just do it with this one. Just link the lines up. And it's only gotta be a roundabout because we're gonna trim this once we get it formed up. And we're not relying on this line as an accurate fold or cut line. Let's chop it. I'm gonna just cut to within uh, eight or 10 mil from the line to get the bulk of the metal out. And then I'll come back with the tin snips and just true it up a bit with those. And that way we're not gonna have to worry about the burr from the grinder still being in the tailgate while we're working it. We're still gonna have a lot of sharp edges, so we could have a few little spots where blood wants to leak out. So here we have a perfectly reasonable Holden tailgate with a hole cut in it. Just be very cautious of all these edges because they are razor sharp. And quite often you've only got to bump them to cut yourself. So always be cautious around metal cut with the angle grinder. At least I can get my hand in there and repair the dent that I put into it. That'll be easy enough. Now, I had my old mate Alan here during the week for a visit and a coffee and explained to him what I was planning to do with the tailgate and his initial response when he saw the template taped on there was, oh, this doesn't look too good. So I showed him the picture of the HSV one that we're copying and he sort of got in his mind what we're doing here and I've got the big thumbs up from Al. It's approval from one of my peers for my crazy scheme, so that's good. Yeah. Interesting to note, now we've cut a hole in it, it's lost a heap of strength. We've pulled the crown out of the metal that sort of bows in both directions that gives it its stability. So once we've cut a hole into it, it goes a bit floppy and loose. So once we form 
this fold over here back onto it, it'll regain some of that strength because it makes it a unit by itself. But because we've only got basically an eight mil fold there, you're only gonna have the strength of what eight millimeters of one millimeter thick material can give you. So. like that, eh? That'll work. Now, the considerations we had was any mechanism inside the tailgate for the latches, but that's actually, the bottom of it's there, and it's in by, oh God, it must be nearly 100 millimetres in, so that's not a problem. We've got the two rods that run through to work the pins, and the only other thing is this reinforcing rail, but we're not gonna be that far in, I would say. We're gonna have plenty of room, so number plate will be close to that, but it's not going to rattle on it or anything. So I'm thinking we're probably going to be in about there with the finished piece. So yeah, so we've got no, no drama at all with anything inside the tailgate, which is good. So now I've just got to make something to fold this over, and it's just going to be a piece of metal that I can hook on the edge and fold it around. And I will admit again, I've used this technique before, but it's not my idea. I learned it from Mr. Foose on one of his videos. I've got a couple of pieces of metal here, and I'm just going to use this piece as a handle. I'll cut a slot in the end of this, so it's about eight millimetres deep, and that will hook on from there, and we can fold it like that, and the handle will go onto it. And then we can just sort of hook him in there and lift and work our way around the thickness of the metal each time and that way we should get it all working pretty nice. So that's nearly deep enough. Not the best welder for this job, but it'll do for what we want to do. This one's got its tongue hanging out welding this size material, but it's turned all the way up. And so it won't be the, the best weld I can possibly have, but it's certainly going to be good enough for what we want to do. Got no earth. And a bit more in here. And we're done. This is just off the welder. It is red hot still, but I can't wait. I've got to do something to try it out. So I'm just going to hook it on and, well, it's a bit hot. Same as any metal shaping, we're just going to take it very steady. But the beauty of this is it's always going to come back to be in that same depth from the edge. getting a little bit of a crease there on that corner. Yeah. Not a problem on the first pass, but once we get close to where we're heading, we'll have to be aware of the angle we want and probably gonna wind up stopping with it a little bit steep. And then when we make our pan to go in the back, we will fine tune it to that. And then it'll be a little bit of toing and froing from one to the other until we get the edge sitting nice.
heat's running down the handle, it's starting to get me. We'll have to put it down for a while. While we're waiting for that to cool down, I can tackle this little bit of a dent. It's, it's, it's really nothing, like it's well within the realms of what could be filled, but we can bump it out because we've got access in there now. So that'll make it easy. Same as shaping a piece of metal to repair a piece of metal, a lot of little goes as opposed to one big go makes a difference. The top edge is going to move the most because it's got the least support on it because there's no metal in around it. fingers a bit up there so some things are that exciting that you're allowed to burn your fingers a little bit to make it happen We're just going to continue forming this lip. So this is the bit where we need a lot of patience. Just slow, steady going on this to get a result. And we're not trying to push it too much on any one pass. This is our third go. And we're already getting a bit of an edge on here. And one of the things I was a bit concerned about was creating too sharp an edge here for the finished part. But looking at the way it's folding, just by using a one-sided tool. We're not clamping this piece of metal down here. We're just relying on the skin tension to do that. It's going to have, I would say, a factory looking radius. So we'll just keep pushing that along and see what we come up with. But I'm pretty confident that once we form this up and run the hammer and dolly around it, we'll get it looking pretty much the finished shape we want. I'm hoping some of you guys with your active imaginations out there are looking at what I'm doing here and looking at the tool I've made. And if you don't own a bead roller and you want to tip an edge on something, this is going to do the same thing. So if you're making a door skin and you wanted to do the dog leg on the back door, you can make the skin on the bench, you can fold the edges whatever way you want. And for that curved edge, you can actually do it this way as well. And you're going to get a very nice edge from it. So we might even push ahead when we make the little recess for in here, we might use technology like this rather than the bead roller, just so we can sort of expand on that and show what can be done with really simple stuff.
got that pretty much where I want it. It needs to go a little bit more just to get it to sort of tip down and form an edge in there. But it's going to stabilise the panel. Like we've taken most of the floppiness out that we had before on this bottom edge and the sides are stabilised. So now what I'm going to do is make a bit of tooling that I can get inside the tailgate to support this line from the back and then we can start working a recess underneath it and we can start getting it to raise up on the top. So it's going to be a case of making a, well, a T-shaped piece really because I'll have to take that linkage rod out of there to make it work. But I want a foot that will actually sit on the inner skin and I want a piece coming out this way because I'm going to put a recess line in like this one along the bottom here. I'm going to have to have two pieces of steel. So there'll be one on the bottom with just a square edge on it and then the one on the top which will form the raised up line. And then I'm going to make a shaped tool with a handle on it that I can hit with the hammer to actually get this little recess to fit in. And it's sort of little V-shaped. So I want it like Holden's done it. I want the little ramp on the bottom edge and the shorter shoulder on the top. But as we come across the gate, I want the top part of it to raise up off the skin. So we've got this little bit of a ramp out to it on the top edge of it. So, uh, and this will be the make or break of it. This is where we're going to find out whether we can stretch the metal enough to get it all in one go, or whether we're going to have a tear in there or something like that that we'll have to address as it happens. But like I say, it's all unknown stuff at this stage. We'll just suck it and see. This is just a piece of scrap that I had. It's actually a piece of wider flat bar that I cut a piece off some time ago and I thought, well, this is such a good section. I'll just keep it just in case it come in handy. So I'm going to use this one to be the bottom edge of the V and then we'll make another piece to sit beside it to support it. But it needs a little bit of a curve this way to match the back of the tailgate when we're looking down on it. So I'm just going to put in the vise and give it a little bit of shape and then we'll see what we've got when we sit it next to the tailgate. So it's just at this stage, we'll just bend it a bit and then see where we're going to need to go. That's too much on that piece there anyway. All right, we'll see where we're going. Okay, so we've got it, it sits across most of it. It's got a little, few little ups and downs, but I'm not worried about them. But the end in here needs a bit more curl on it. Now we can't actually get it that close to the edge, I think, because of the shape of the inner part of the tailgate. It's got a little box section on the end. That's going to be tight. I don't know, we can get in most of it. We can get it about to there. So we need the spot where it rocks is the piece we need more curve in it. So it's just in there we need to bend it a bit so probably need to hit that with a hammer or something. And so that's going to be close. And that bend there was a little bit steep. So. All right we'll see how we go now. Okay, about there. All right, so we've got a spot in there that we need a bit more curve in it. Okay. All right, I reckon that is nearly good enough for what we want to do. So from there, put a bit above there. You know, that's good enough. A little bit more bend in it. Rough enough. Right. Now I'm just using a piece of scrap here. So I've got to get that shape here onto our new piece. If we work out our cut line, we know exactly how long we need to make it this way. And what I'm planning to do on this inside edge, because that's going to go all the way into the tailgate, and I can probably use some of this area in here. And I'm just going to weld a little piece of round bar on the end of it to push through a hole in the frame that I'll, I'll drill in the tailgate and that'll stabilise that end, and then we've only got to stabilise the centre end to get in the right spot before we can start hammering away on it. And we will weld some pieces between them to form this little outrigger on the side, and that should have enough support to do what we want, I hope.
we go in. Oh, that's nice. I like that. About there. So we'll cut him off about there. And put the front. Probably going to have to chore a bit of this out to make it fit into the inside. I'll open the gate in a minute and I'll show you what I mean. So that's about as far out as we can get. So, and this one's going to follow this line, so it can be longer. So I think we'll leave all the length on it and we'll just get it to curve to match. What we're going to need... choring and we'll make it in a weld of base on it. Now it doesn't matter that this is not as deep as the tailgate because I want to drag this piece of metal outwards I'm going to have to chock the inside edge up with some small blocks of wood and things like that to actually get it in there, lever it this way and then we can start working the skin to get the shape in it we want. grinding a piece of flat bar. I've grabbed a bit of 36 grit. It'll rip it off pretty quick for what we want to do. And a little bit of a drink for the air sander. They don't need a lot. And it's ready to go. Good. That's well good enough. Right, now we come back to our tailgate and we're looking at the line we want to push out. I want the top of it to slope out and have a little curl in it, but I want a radius on the top and a sharp edge on the bottom. So for this side of the tailgate, the left side, this is going to be the top edge of this plate. So I'm going to grind a radius on here all the way across and then when we put it on the other side, we'll turn it round, I'll grind it back flat again and do the radius the other way. And that way we'll get the same sort of effect both sides. So bear with me while I slice a bit off that and we'll get it looking pretty good. It's given us a little bit of a bevel, it's just taken that sharp edge off, which is sort of what I want on my raised line, is just have this bit of a rounded edge at the top. So that's going to work, so the next thing we need to do is just get it so it physically will fit into the tailgate as far across as we possibly can get it, and then I'll weld a pin on the end of it, drill a hole in the frame so I can poke that through to stabilise it, and then we can start looking at our foot end and getting that to work. This is the area that we need this to poke into, so it's not all that thick, so what are we looking 20 mil or something like that, so we're going to have to cut a piece down for the distance of that. So 
if we just look at that, we've got to come back to about here. And I'd say if we make it about this thick through there, we're going to be getting close anyway to something that's going to slide in on the other side of that flat. And then I'll drill a little hole in the end. We'll have a little pin just in here under the skin level that we can poke through. And then I can put a pair of vice grips across here to clamp it all in place. Now, because I want that little V underneath, we're going to have our hole. And then we're going to have to cut a V or just a piece of metal out of here to allow this part of the frame here and the skin to actually press back into it. So we'll do all that at the same time and get that set up so we can start working it. So back to the bench and a bit more cutting. See how we go. That's nearly all the way in. That's, oh, I'm guessing within 10 or 12 millimetres as far as I can go, but it's tight on this end down in here. So I'll just grind this back a little bit in this corner and I'll go ahead and I'll weld a little piece of round bar on it. And we should be just about ready to rock and roll at that point, I'd say. Not the done thing to be grinding metal straight off the welder, but we've got away with it. It's got a pretty good heat sink with all this material in here to get away with it. And there was only a little bit of welding, so we've escaped with that. So I'll just drill a little hole through the end of the frame to get a bit of rod through, and we can assemble that up. But what I'll do before then is I'm just gonna weld this on top of that, and that's going to be the foot that will sit inside the tailgate, and then I'll block this end of it up with some pieces of um, wood and things like that as we go. This scribe line is actually the bottom of our feature. So the hole's going to get drilled in the frame just above it. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to eyeball my drill bit about there. Just check him. And that's pretty good there. run down a little bit from the end. I'll open the tailgate and I'll show you what I mean. What I was aiming for was the hole to be right in that little corner down there, but it's actually walked up because of this being a little bit on an angle and away from the end. So I'll get the die grinder and just recess it down to the bottom. But also I want to get the little piece cut out below it for the little fold to go in which will make it the same as what we've got here once we get in there. So like I say, that piece, that line being in there being the bottom of the feature. So that's where our piece is here. Where are we at? Yes, so the little V out is gonna come just in underneath here and we're gonna wind up with a little recess in there. So that all works. I'll grind that out and I can cut this piece out just below it for roughly 12 mil or so, something like that in there. Air tools. I've had approximately two and a half more minutes to think about this and I've decided what I want to do is get some of the shape in the panel before I cut that little recess in, just to make sure that my tooling's not going to move. So once there's a little bit of a line pressed in there, 
it's going to stabilize itself. So for now, I'll just get this hole sorted out here. We can get the piece into the tailgate and then we can move on from there. And we just gotta get it all to fit. If I put the vice grips right up to my line, it means that on the inside, our form is gonna be sitting right against the line. Now I need to find some suitable things. But for some reason, GMH put a lock rod in the way. supposed to unhook them from this side either. I think thinking the first job is to just sort of run a bit of a indentation above that line. So we're going to be up the thickness of our plate, which is a bit of five mil stock, I think, from memory. So it'll come in along here. So let's try it simple first and see what happens. And this is what excitement and adrenaline does for you. I have got ahead of myself because I was supposed to weld that other piece on the bottom first, but We've got to have a play. We can't leave it as it is. It's in there. It's in the right spot. Let's put a dent in it. Now, this end here, I want to taper from nothing. So I've already put a dent in that's too big there, but it might disappear yet. But this area here, you can see the top of our former sitting in there, and we're starting to get this little scallop. But we've got to take this from this much of an indentation to a similar to this one. So we've got a way to go yet, and it's slow and steady stuff, guys. You can't rush this. starting to get something that's quite visible. So we'll give it another pass like that, but we're probably going to have to look at getting it to continue to the middle. And I've got a few other ideas on that. We'll, try, we'll, we'll do some different things just to sort of vary it a little bit. Look at that, look at that. So I've got a little dent that I added into it for well, carelessness to start with. So something I've just showed myself, where I'm working close to the end, I need to have this end supported on the edge of the tailgate and then work back to an area like this rather than having the end of it sitting in there where I'm gonna create a dent. But we can get them out later, it's not a big drama. So I think we're far enough now that from here, we'll start working this bottom feature in under here because that's got to run into our number plate recess. And then we've got to probably extend our tooling or, like I say, I do have some other ideas that we can make so we can clamp on there and 
get that line to run all the way to the centre. And then last of all, once I've got this sorted, that sorted, this all sorted, before I go to the making the pan to go in there, we'll make the little mount for the lion to sit on in the centre of the tailgate. We've seen that before. Okay, I'm going to weld my little outrigger on it and we want to recreate this little line in here. So we've got to be the same distance apart as that. Which we can see is... Uh, 15 millimetres, look at that. Everyone likes a nice even number. And we've got to put it on this side. All the way to about there. So we're going to put something in there that's 15 mil wide and weld them together. And we want this one to be a bit higher when it goes together in the middle because that line's going to taper up off this one. So if we just do three blocks that are 15 mil wide and weld it to those and weld that to those, we will have it. I've cut a little bit of a bevel on it that lines up with our tailgate recess. So now I'm just going to weld a handle on this side, which will just be another piece of that off cut. And I can just hold that and work it along with the hammer. But I'm also just going to take the corners off so I don't get any little, the end of the tool wanting to bang and put a series of dents all the way across. So we'll just radius it probably about 15 mil in and just a little bit of a curl out to the sides on both ends of it. And it should make a nice tool. So, Bit of chopping, bit of gluing, good stuff. So we want to handle about that long. Okay, about to weld. There we have it. A bit hot to hang on to and <laughs> I've got to get it lined up with that hole on the end. It's not working. Desperate measures. It's not playing the game. I have welded a piece of wire on it to guide it through the hole.
It might be that other way. That's what that's stopping us. Oh, it's this piece that's stopping us. That's what the problem is. It's too far to the end. So that's why it won't go in, because we're sitting on this shoulder here. Yep. So I'm just going to get rid of that piece of metal in there, and it'll all work. All right, so I've just reduced that down, so it should just poke in now and work. There at the spot. And now my piece of wire is going to be in the way. Back on there. And if you come around here, you'll be able to see that's the corner of our bottom piece of our former rail there. So I'm going to put a clamp on it just in here to tie this together. And then we should be able to start working this area in here to put our little line into it. Okay, what are we on there? That's weird. Not knowing anything that should be poking out there. Unless we're past there. No, it should be up to there. That's weird. We'll come, we'll put the bullet out now and look at that. So that's our little ramp into there and our recess. It's all working nicely. I've got a pointy thing here for some reason, so it's all gonna to have to come to bits again and work out what's pinching on the skin there. But that's basically where we're at. So I'm going to have to work both edges together to get the defect I want. When I put this former in, I came under my scribe line to give myself enough piece of metal to tuck in underneath it. So we've got to stretch it out. And so far we're feeling pretty good down here. So that's roughly where we're heading. Now I used a bit of 16 mil as my spacer in there, so I do have this line a little bit further apart than the bottom one, but I don't think that's gonna hurt because that's gonna flow into the opening over here. That's so all this sort of, when you design on the go and build tooling on the go, sometimes you sort of just make these little adjustments and live with them. And what's happening now is the angle I'm hitting this on, I'm creating a dent down here. So I've got to keep the angle up to get the effect I want. heading in the direction we want it to. So some of it looks a bit ugly because the clear is flaking, but that's actually a pretty good surface through there. We'll have a look and see what's going on in there.
something on that. Might have broken off even. What's in there? Yeah, I'd say it will have fallen off there, would it? Just where that spot is there, it's had a ball of weld sitting on there and that's what's caused the problem. It's propped it and it's created that little dent. So now I've got it out the way. It's not stuck in the skin. Um, it'll be sitting in the bottom of the target somewhere. There. Now it's going to lock itself in there quite well because I've now got to recess each side of the bead line. So the former comes to here. So I can bring this a little bit further this way and we can work our way to the end that way. going to settle down. Okay. The next thing we need is to get the little recess in the end so I can just bend this end, the crimp on the end of the skin in a bit. That fixes that. So we might just grab a drill, chop a bit of metal out. Probably have to do this off the car and work that little crimp in the corner with a bit better tooling than what we're using. But we can get most of this further down yet. Okay. So that's coming in. I want this raised up a bit more at the top. So what's going to happen is I'll wind up propping this out with more material behind it and I'll work this edge a bit more. But we're almost at the point where we're going to have to concede defeat on this spot and work into the air centre of the tailgate to keep everything going where we want it to. I'll give it another pass with this one and then we'll call it a day for now. Okay, so this is the effect I'm after. This is what I'm really happy with. I want this little curl out here. I want a more gentle radius on the top. So I might take that tool out and grind a bit more off that top edge there to get a bit better radius. And then I want this line underneath it, which is going to flow into this number plate recess there. So we've got a pretty good line forming across here. And it's not looking as good as what it actually is because the clear coat's actually just cracked 
and it's not in a straight line, but because it's sitting next to that other piece of steel, it's pretty good. So if we just use a, what have we got? Just try it like this. If we sit this on that bottom edge, Uh, not going to work, the weld's going to hit the tailgate and dent it. But we can use something flat, and I'll probably got a bit of flat bar or something later on, and I can just run across on this angle here to just pick this corner up and get a nice straight edge through there. And we're going to get most of it looking pretty good in the steel. So that's, that's a good sign. So there we go. Thank you, sir. So here we have a little bit of imagination, thinking up the ways to um, build some tooling that we can fit inside the shell of the tailgate to make it work. And we're well on the way to getting the effect I want. And as I said before, it's not going to be perfect where it's going to be metal finished and painted straight over it, but it's only going to need a smell of filler and the whole thing's going to work. So like I said before, I'll show you some other ways. Vice grips are a really handy tool, but they do wear out with age, but you never throw away a pair of old vice grips because when they've reached the point that they are no longer good for what they're designed for, you can cut the jaws off and weld sections on there. Now you've seen me making pull max tools, imagine the same deal, but welded onto the jaws of a pair of vice grips, and you've got your very own handheld pull max for doing this sort of work. So when we come back, that's what we'll do, is we'll make a set of jaws, we'll weld them onto an old pair of vice grips, and we'll continue this line into the centre here. And once we get to the centre point, we will design some tooling to put the Holden Lion in there. And I'm not 100% certain whether I want it sitting up here or sitting in there or even into there, but this edge here is going to be folded under. So we can actually make this line come up and scallop around here and just sort of sit that out a little bit, or we can put it in up here and we can raise a bottom piece around here to bring it up to this level here and we can put a little raised boss around there, but we'll do something to make it look a little bit specky and a little bit out of the ordinary. So, so far, super happy with the result we've got, and um, stay tuned for the next episode, and we'll be back into the tailgate and get some more done. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Umpire a signalled lunch. Seagulls? Yes, yeah, seagulls are walking up to the pie stand.